All equipment, utensils, and food contact surfaces in the processing facility should be cleaned and sanitized on a daily basis, or more often if needed, in order to prevent the adulteration of food products. Most firms use a Sanitation Standard Operating Procedure, or SSOP, and Master Sanitation Schedule, which documents specific details on how workers are to clean and sanitize, how sanitizers are to be used and mixed, and how and when tasks should be completed. These documents should also describe how and where hoses, shovels, and other utensils are to be used and stored. The SSOP, or Master Sanitation Schedule, should be reviewed by management periodically and be updated if needed. The SSOPs focus on cleaning food contact surfaces. In order to properly clean and sanitize equipment, utensils, and food contact surfaces, it's important that they be adequately constructed so as to be easily cleanable and maintained. The materials used for equipment, utensils, and food contact surfaces should be non-toxic, durable, and non-absorbent. In addition, equipment should be designed to be accessible for cleaning and sanitizing or be easily disassembled to allow for cleaning and sanitizing. What's the difference between cleaning and sanitizing? Even though many people believe they are the same, they are really two completely separate steps in an effective operation. Cleaning is the removal of organic material and debris from surfaces in preparation for sanitizing. Cleaning involves washing and rinsing and is usually done with detergents and soap and physical scrubbing or agitation, followed by a clean water rinse. Sanitize means to treat clean food contact surfaces by a process that destroys pathogens and reduces the number of other microbes without adversely affecting product safety. To maximize the effectiveness of cleaning and sanitizing activities, there is an order of activities that should be followed. First, any equipment that needs to be disassembled prior to cleaning should be taken apart by the properly trained individuals. Then, all surfaces should receive a pre-rinse with potable water. Next, all surfaces and equipment should be effectively cleaned using hot water, detergent, high pressure, or scrubbing as necessary. Detergent type and strength will influence the effectiveness of any cleaning program. The type of detergent used is determined by the type of soil to be removed. The temperature of the detergent solution and the exposure time are also important, as is the amount of physical scrubbing required and how well the equipment is pre-rinsed. These factors should be specified in written Sanitation Standard Operating Procedures, SSOPs, or Master Sanitation Schedule to help ensure that they are adequately and consistently performed. After cleaning, the detergent or soap should be completely rinsed off with potable water. Next, all surfaces should be sanitized with an approved antimicrobial agent. Commonly used sanitizers include chlorine, chlorine dioxide, or quaternary ammonium. It's important that the level of sanitizer used be adequate to kill the targeted microbe, which could be Salmonella, Listeria monocytogenes, or E. coli 0157H7, or any other pathogen. When using chlorine, a level of 100 to a maximum of 200 parts per million total chlorine is typically used. Personnel should follow label instructions when mixing and applying the sanitizers used. All sanitizer levels should also be checked and recorded. Consider rotating sanitizers in order to prevent the development of pathogen resistance to that sanitizer. There are also several factors to consider when choosing a sanitizer, such as the type of equipment or surface to be sanitized, the temperature and contact time required by the sanitizing solution, and the pH and the hardness of the water. Of these factors, the pH of the water is the most important. Consult with chemical suppliers for guidance in the choice and use of detergents and sanitizers. Also, it's important to read and follow all labels of all sanitizers and detergents. All cleaning and sanitation activities should be documented in writing and reviewed by a supervisor. This provides for uniformity in these activities and allows for changes should they be needed. Another way to check on the effectiveness of all cleaning and sanitation activities is to conduct environmental monitoring of walls, floors, ceilings, drains, chiller, and storage racks. There are various types of environmental monitoring, such as bacterial swabbing and the use of luminometers that use bioluminescence or light from organic matter to show whether a surface has been cleaned and sanitized properly. Luminometers measure the amount of organic matter that may be left on food contact surfaces after cleaning and sanitizing. The amount of organic matter is read in the form of numbers. This type of monitoring provides for immediate feedback and can pinpoint problem areas. 
Firms may conduct these monitoring activities in-house, or they may choose to hire an outside lab. Outside labs should be certified by the proper authorities in order to conduct monitoring activities. Check with local or state authorities, suppliers, and technical magazines for acceptable laboratories in the area. If a firm chooses to monitor in-house, proper procedures should be followed at all times, and all monitoring should be documented and be verifiable. It's always recommended that whatever methods are used, accurate results should be provided in as short a time as possible. The proper use of all chemicals in a fresh cut processing facility should be covered in the Sanitation Standard Operating Procedures or Sanitation Manual. The SSOP or Sanitation Manual should detail what chemicals are to be used for each job, how and when they are to be mixed and applied, as well as all precautions to be taken when using each chemical. All chemicals should only be used as labeled and when safe. All chemical containers should be labeled properly. All chemicals should be stored so as they do not contaminate food, ingredients, or packaging. Chemicals should not be stored on food contact surfaces and should not be stored in empty food or ingredient containers. The label instructions for all chemicals should be followed with no hesitation to contact the supplier if there are questions. What is the importance of acceptable equipment construction and proper cleaning and sanitizing activities? Acceptable equipment construction and proper cleaning and sanitizing activities play a key role in the control of biofilm. Have you heard your dentist talk about removing plaque from your teeth? Have you ever walked across a stream and slipped on slimy rocks? These are both common examples of biofilms. What is biofilm? Biofilm can be defined as a thin layer of bacterial cells that adhere to equipment and other surfaces and are more resistant to common sanitizers. Various pathogens such as Listeria, Salmonella, and E. coli 0157H7 have been shown to form biofilms that can contaminate food products during production. Biofilms can be found on the surfaces of product lines, cutting boards, fillers, spinner baskets, stainless steel and plastic conveyor systems, and any surface in constant contact with a product. Bacteria in biofilms are hard to find using normal monitoring techniques. The control of biofilms is also very difficult. The bacteria in biofilm acquire extreme resistance to sanitizers, disinfectants, and heat treatment. Because biofilms can build up over time, timely and proper cleaning and sanitizing is needed to ensure that bacteria are killed in the early stages of biofilm formation. Sanitation workers should vigorously follow all cleaning steps, pre-rinse, clean, post-rinse, and sanitize every time they clean. The cleaning crew should also strictly follow the directions for the concentration, temperatures, and contact times for all cleaners and sanitizers, and those cleaners and sanitizers should reach all food contact surfaces. Supervisors, or a properly trained employee, should conduct visual sanitation inspections after all equipment and surfaces have been cleaned. Microbiological testing of equipment and surfaces should also be considered. Following the firm's Sanitation Standard Operating Procedures, or Sanitation Manual, is imperative for controlling biofilm formation. A firm should replace or repair any rusty, pitted, or deteriorated equipment and food contact surfaces because rust and deteriorated equipment allows for the growth of bacteria. Such equipment becomes difficult to clean, which makes the formation of biofilms very easy. Another important factor in the safe processing of fresh cut products is pest control and exclusion. Pests can and do contaminate foods and transmit disease. Safe and effective control and exclusion is a priority. Proper pest control and exclusion can be separated into two categories, physical controls and chemical controls. Exclusion is the practice of preventing the entrance of any vermin or pests into a facility. Physical controls include items such as window screens, screen doors, proper weather stripping of all doors, plastic curtains, and air fans at all doorways. Even the practice of keeping all doors closed serves as a physical control. Insects, rodents, and birds, as well as domestic animals, should be excluded from the facility at all times. Other practices can serve as effective physical controls proper storage and removal of waste products from the facility, removal of old, unused equipment, and maintaining the exterior grounds surrounding a facility all deter vermin. Keeping a sufficiently cleared space around the exterior perimeter of the building is also helpful. Other practices in the day-to-day -day operation of a facility help control pests. 
Proper storage of ingredients, finished products, and packaging, as well as the timely cleanup of spills and the proper lighting of the facility all help in discouraging vermin infestations. Chemical pest controls consist of the use of pesticides, traps, and baits in and around the facility. It is suggested that fresh cut processors employ a licensed pest control operator or contract with an outside firm to conduct these activities. Any chemicals used in pest control applications should be acceptable for use in a food processing facility and their applications should not contaminate foods, ingredients, or food packaging. All pest control chemicals should be stored properly in designated areas and not stored on food contact surfaces or in any areas of the facility that could contaminate ingredients, finished products, or packaging. All pest control activities should be routinely monitored and recorded. Proper monitoring will show the effectiveness of those activities or it will point out areas that need more attention. Remember, chemical controls can only be effective when used in conjunction with well-established physical controls. The primary goal should be to exclude all pests.